We've had lots of energy bills since 1973. It's not that we haven't had energy policies. Every administration, there's a little book you can find, the Carter plan, the Nixon plan, whatever. They all have plans. And some of them weren't, and some of them aren't bad. The reality is when we get in the political marketplace, that people fight each other over these, you know, whether you're an oil and gas producing state or a coal producing state or a large consuming state or a big industrial state that uses a lot of energy. You, of course, want low prices, not high prices. And we just have created a situation. We have something like 29 committees and something like 47 more or less subcommittees in the Congress that deal with energy. I mean, you can't run, you can't run a policy this way. You need to have one committee that has at least paramount jurisdiction on these matters and you know we have attendant lobbyists for every one of these uh, every one of these sources of energy fighting each other in the halls of congress and it's simply a a partisan system that is broken and not in the interest of the american people perfect legislation coming off capitol hill would uh, find new tax incentives for uh, efficiency you know, it's a joke to say to somebody who has to spend $10,000 on new windows in their house that they're going to get a $125 tax credit or something. You know, really have some real real teeth behind that. Uh, I would mandate, uh, I mean, I would set a goal of retrofitting uh, the energy efficiency of every commercial and residential building in this country over the next 15 years. Uh, we need to have incentives for renewables and not this procedure we've had over the last number of years that they're voted in, they're voted out, so investors don't have a clear signal on whether it's a good place to put their money or not. I personally think we need to revitalize atomic power, but we also need to be realistic that these plants are very expensive and they're only going to be built in a limited sort of way at their current cost, despite what the industry tells us, the costs keep going up. We need to put R&D into clean coal technology. We had a plant under... uh, we had a demonstration plant under construction in Illinois. It got very expensive. They axed the funding for it. But this technology alone would help not only the United States, but it's the major fuel coal in India and China. And if they don't find a way to do carbon capture and storage, that's equally important. Whether it's a technological problem or a cost problem that it can't be done cost effectively, because then it, the implications for other fuels become very, very important, and particularly nuclear, if that were the case that we had to completely forego coal. Uh, I think you know we need to enhance our fuel efficiency standards beyond what they've now done. There's no reason we can't get the same fuel efficiency that cars in Europe are getting. You know what? We have one or two models that get 40, 45 miles a gallon with the Prius in Europe. There are 15 or 20 different models. Why not? Why can't we set a goal to do that in the next five, seven years? You can argue about the time frame, but set the goal and keep the goal. Don't roll it back under pressure from Detroit or other people that have uh, different interests than those of the American consumer. Uh, I think we ought to do offshore oil and gas drilling, um, but you know I think that should be done prudently, and I don't think we necessarily have to rush in to the most sensitive environmental areas like the Arctic National Wildlife Refuge, but there are plenty of areas that... Uh, look promising, uh, um, and we should pursue that. Uh, We should also, I think, uh, give accelerated uh, research and development grants uh, to companies that are engaged in new transportation fuel development, whether that's plug-ins, all-electric cars with batteries, CNG, compressed natural gas vehicles, whatever. You know, that's why I say I think we need a policy across the board. The problem is, in our political system, people see it as a win Winner take all, and so you get you know the car manufacturer, the traditional car manufacturers fighting the people coming in with new vehicles. You get the people that don't like the oil and gas industry making outrageous claims about what, that renewables can replace these. When and on the same side, you get the oil and gas industry saying renewables are going to be a drop in the bucket. 